How many fossils have been found in the park? There's literally tens of thousands of fossils in the park if you include all the petrified logs. Stuff that we've found and collected, everything from plants to invertebrate, invertebrate animals, I want to say 20 to 30,000, and there's way more out there. There have been about 181 different species of plants, animals, pollen, and you know footprints and all kinds of things described from the park. Um, we have probably about 30 more that are in the process of being published in scientific publications. So that brings us up around 200 different kinds of fossils. Some of the largest fossils we find here at the park belong to phytosaurs which are long snouted reptiles that look like crocodilians. In fact, this is a picture of a skull of a phytosaur. Um, they get really big. These things can be 20 feet long in life um, and they have a lot of bones. So uh, the field jackets that we make can, can be many uh, feet across and weigh several hundred pounds. Phytosaur skulls are interesting because you can actually tell a lot about the variation within a species by collecting a lot of the skulls. The smallest fossils are probably fossil pollen, just like you would find pollen blowing in the wind in a pine forest today, you found it blowing around during the Triassic too. And so all of those fossils are just these amorphous little blobs on a microscope slide, and so you can only see them under magnification, very high magnification. The smallest uh, fossil from an animal is probably uh, one of the tiny scale-like structures on a shark's skin called a denticle. And so they're just like teeth, but they're all over the skin instead, and they are itty bitty, less, way less than a, a, a millimeter in size. I found a lot of cool fossils. Um, one of the coolest ones I found recently uh, belongs to a relative of this animal, which is called a tuatara. This is twice, twice life size. Um, and the little jaws we're finding in the Triassic of animals like this are about this long. Um, but they have a bunch of teeth uh, and we're finding all kinds of different types of these animals. The most unique fossil found in the park has got to be an isolated tooth that is called Craterochiridon holberdi. And the reason it's unique is because, one, it's the only one that's found in the park. There's only two in existence worldwide. And interestingly, we don't know what kind of animal it belongs to, whether it's a fish, amphibian, reptile, or what. But it's so different from every other tooth that we've ever found that it deserved a new name. Petrified forest preserves a lot of fossils. Um, however, dinosaurs are relatively rare and are a pretty small component of what we find. Uh, but yes, we do find dinosaurs. Uh, and yes, they are real. Uh, every fossil that we find and work on is real. Uh, the dinosaurs that we do find are mostly small, bipedal, carnivorous dinosaurs like Chindosaurus or Coelophysis. Um, these are about six to eight feet long and maybe weigh between 50 and 60 pounds. Um, we do find a lot of other non-dinosaur archosaur fossils like the phytosaurs, aetosaurs, and rawasukians, which kind of look like crocodiles and dinosaurs, but are their own distinct groups. Our best evidence to answer this question comes not only from the dinosaur fossils themselves, but from studying the rocks that surround them. But how exactly do we figure out the age of the rocks? There are two ways that scientists do this, relative dating and absolute dating. Here at Petrified Forests, we have a number of ash layers in our rock record that allow us to conduct absolute dating. Volcanic rocks, such as ash, contain a certain type of radioactive isotope. These radioactive isotopes degrade over time into a different type of isotope in a measurable amount through time. Scientists examine the ratio of these two different isotopes, allowing them to pinpoint a more specific age. Unfortunately, not every type of rock can be dated in this way. For sedimentary and metamorphic rocks, we rely more on relative dating. 
while relative dating doesn't provide specific ages for fossils, when used in combination with absolute dates and principles of stratigraphy, relative dating can place fossils within a narrower time window. Most of the fossils at Petrified Forest come from the Triassic Age Chinle Formation, which is about 225 to 205 million years old. Uh, the oldest of these fossils would come from the Blue Mesa member, which is about at most 225 million years old. Uh, the fossils found from the Blue Mesa member include entire ecosystems of animals and plants, uh, conifer trees, ferns, cycads, horsetails, and other plants that would have supported animals like uh, dinosaurs, phytosaurs, itosaurs, uh, the giant amphibian metoposaurs, uh, frogs, salamanders, freshwater sharks, and fish, just to name a few. A lot of the names for geologic time periods are based on the rocks that were used to identify that time period or the location where those rocks are found. So the Jurassic, for example, is named after the Juras Mountains in Europe uh, because that's where the limestone beds that were used to identify the time period were found. Um, the Cretaceous period, which follows the Jurassic period, uh, is named because of the extensive chalk uh, outcrops in Western Europe. The Latin word for chalk is creta, hence Cretaceous. Now in northeastern Arizona, where petrified forest is, we have a lot of Triassic rocks, and the Triassic period comes right before the Jurassic. And the Triassic rock group originally had three different sections, hence tri Triassic, referring to the group of three. I will never really know exactly what animals from the past looked like. We, there are several ways in which we can um, kind of make an educated guess about that. And one of these ways is through comparative anatomy. And this is where we compare the, the fossil bones to those of modern animals. And through this, we can determine things such as diet based on their tooth morphology or whether or not the animals likely walked on two legs or four legs, uh, whether they may have flown or swam in rivers and oceans and so on. Uh, another thing that we can do is look very closely at the bones themselves and we can see little grooves or bumps which are uh, basically muscle scars or places where muscles that attached to the bone. And that can tell us things like possibly the strength of the bite of an animal or the size of the muscles themselves. Uh, and finally, one of the, the most interesting things is sometimes we actually get soft tissue preservation. And that's uh, things like skin impressions uh, or feathers and fur. And this is direct evidence of what kind of the outside of the animal may have looked like. There's probably a number of factors and as to why animals were bigger or uh, had different types of armor and things that may not exist today. Uh, and one of these things was probably just that the environment was different than it is today. For example, in the Mesozoic, we know that temperatures were a lot hotter. There's a lot more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and um, which kind of led to hotter temperatures. And this may have been something that uh, was really kind of good for the animals at the time. It's probably also really good for plants and uh, making kind of an abundance of food for all the plant eating dinosaurs. The more you eat, the bigger you can get and the bigger you get, the harder you are to catch. And so uh, things like size as well as armor make it harder for the predators to actually attack you. So then those predators also have to get bigger and stronger. Uh, and then in order to defend yourself, you again become bigger and stronger, creating this kind of evolutionary cycle of ever increasing size right up until the end of the Mesozoic. While Petrified Forest National Park might be one of the more famous petrified forests, there are plenty of other forests that you can visit, each having its own unique character. 
just within the United States, you can visit a petrified forest in Washington, Utah, California, and even Mississippi, just to name a few. Internationally speaking, petrified forests have been found on every continent with the exception of Antarctica, although they have fossils there too. Most of the petrified wood here in the park is lying down. Um, this is because most of them were not preserved standing up, but were instead transported in a stream before being buried. However, there are a few spots in the backcountry where there are stumps that are rooted that are preserved. Um, these are pretty rare and not very tall, um, but maybe you'll stumble across a few of them on your next hike off the beaten path. 